Courting Civil War, a lesson in civil discourse. On January 20th, a historic day every four to eight years in America was met with national protests, leading to dozens of arrests and damages to property. On January 21st, thousands of men and children, and primarily women, protested nationally opposing and reminding newly inaugurated President Trump of their role in society at the Women's March. Later in the year, several dozen people held a die-in at a Senate building, protesting Trump care. Many were disabled and when refusing to leave were removed by the police. In August, some several dozen people joined to protest the removal of Confederate statues in Charlottesville, Virginia. They were met with opposition and many were injured and on the following day, several statues around the United States were removed. Concerned citizens throughout the United States, having seen the events unfolding, are concerned about the unity of the states and are asking, is the United States of America polarized? Yeah, we and are really we polarized. Here. And I think at the heart of it, we all want what is best for everyone, but we need to realize that one size doesn't fit all. I just think um, a lot of us don't necessarily know what we want yet, and a lot of people, the problem with a lot of people in America today is that they think, well, I have my own opinion, and if, you're, if you don't agree with me, then yours is wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a mistake that a lot of them make, and that's why there's so many discussions and we're all very polarized, because we can't accept another person's opinion other than our own. I would say yes. I think that we often surround ourselves with people who think like us and because of that those moments when we encounter someone who doesn't think like us we don't really know how to respond appropriately and um, it's something that we need to as a society work on. And with most Americans coming to this conclusion they have begun to look for solutions. Miss Gearhart teaches 10th and 11th grade English and incorporates a unique lesson plan to discuss controversial and class topics, which most times are one and the same. A Socratic seminar is a very student-led learning where the students are in control of the discussion instead of the teacher. And it is, uh, and it's actually from Socrates in the days of the Greeks, um, who thought the best way to learn was to question. There are nine main rules, but the biggest ones are that the discussion is the focus and it's ideas, not people. So students are not to ever be attacking each other. While the format of a Socratic seminar is structured by Ms. Gearhart, the students determine its success and difference from daily conversations. Um, in a Socratic seminar, everyone can voice their opinion. And around lunch, like whoever like, shouts the loudest or maybe they like whoever's the most popular, they usually have like the best opinion. It's actually very it's refreshing to hear a different opinion other than your own because you constantly think you're right but then you come to these discussions and you all talk it out and you see that you know my opinion is not the only one that matters there's another one out there and it's right you know it's not my opinion is the only one that's right because I'm wrong a lot of the times so it's great to see other people's input and speak about it. Mrs. Shockey has been a teacher at Hedgesville for 20 years, and half of that she has spent as an advisor to debate and speech. <laughs> a few years ago, I only had um, a dozen members. Um, that was only four years ago, and this year I had almost 40 people sign up. So, and I had 23 people compete last week. Um, we're a bit of an anomaly. You know, it's really funny. In her experience as judge and coach, Mrs. Shockey watches students passionately and politely disagree every tournament. Because they've been competing for a couple of years. Um, and they're very, very friendly. They come up to me as the judge and they shake my hand. They say thank you. And as soon as I start that timer, they are down to business. And it can get a little um, hostile sometimes and uh, but um, they my students um, and students from other schools learned really quickly that in the midst of a debate you are very um, professional and you do your job and as soon as that timer goes off again we're back to being friends and we shake hands and we walk out hey that was really great and you know, that always makes me the happiest when I hear my students really go for it and then they just say, you did a really great job. I, th I think too often we have, in the, in the real world, especially in politics, there's so much on the line. You know, they will be nice and they will be friendly um, before and after a debate. Um, but they're not going to walk out the door and compliment each other on, hey, that was a really great line you pulled out there, you know. Having seen the benefits of participating in debate and speech on her past students, Ms. Shockey hopes to see continued effects in her students in the future. 
Yes, I do. Um, because they will eventually um, learn to do the research um, and they're going to form their own opinions. They're going to learn the process of doing that. Uh, and that's a skill that will carry throughout life. Hedgesville High's principal, Mr. Lyons, has been involved with a program in the county trying to encourage students to discuss the issues and controversies in the world and the United States under the hope of instilling civil discourse. Civil discourse is an engagement and discussion intended to enhance understanding. People in general seem to be more polarized and um, uh, we actually have started a, a program here on civil discourse um, within our county. Um, trying to get people to talk about the issues rather than argue about the issues. I don't think you get a lot of change if if one side's here and one side's here. Most people aren't there, but the, the loudest voices often get heard the most, and most people are in the middle, and it's those people who oftentimes have really good ideas but don't want to get involved in the argument. And uh, so I guess that's, we don't get a lot of things done. Hopeful for the impact of civil discourse, Mr. Lyons shares his vision for the civil discourse programs and outlets in Hedgesville High School. I would love to see students be able to sit and talk about not only issues in our school, but and sit with both students and adults, not only issues in our school, but issues in, in our country, uh, issues in the world, and understand and respect differences in opinion. Um, that's big. I mean, that's really big. In my classroom when I was teaching, I had a sign that stretched the entire length of the room. And I'll quote it. It was from Thomas Jefferson. It said, if a nation expects to be both ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. And what that says is if we're not smart, if we don't inform ourselves, watch the news, understand what the issues are, um, and then talk about them, we, we won't be very successful. Um, so, there you go. While it remains unclear of the full nature behind the division of the United States, students and teachers strive to create an environment to teach students to combat ignorance and cultivate civility. I'm Hannah Longley with ENN.